Hey, welcome back to Fish Hunt Northwest. We are here in the Bay Lab. Everything you see in the Bay Lab is presented by Max Lure. We just got off the phone with uh, Jaime <laughs> Rodriguez with Max Lure, a phenomenal pro staffer for them. He does a fantastic job. But we're not talking about walleye in here. We're talking about terminal area or tributary Chinook fishing. It is early fall, believe it or not. The leaves are actually starting to fall off the tree, Tommy. And uh, the rivers are getting stuffed full of Chinook depending on where the river is in the state of Washington or Oregon. Some have earlier return than others. So for those rivers that are already showing numbers of Chinook, it's time to put eggs under floats and go after Chinook. One of my favorite things to do every year I look forward to this. Now there's a couple different methods or techniques in how you present those eggs under a float. I get a lot of questions on exactly how we rig this and there's a number of ways persons will rig their gear with their float offsetting weight, uh, different size hooks, leader length, how do you weight your eggs uh, or put weight down near your eggs so that you get them to drop down into the current seam sooner than later. If I'm fishing a float and I got a glob of eggs on there and it's five feet from the float and I cast that out, it takes a while for that bait to pendulum on down into the water column and you might be halfway through your drift before you ever get that bait actually down in front of your fish. So there's some things you can do that will actually provide you with more results if you're rigging correctly. And I think I mentioned a minute ago, it's all about, for me, putting everything in line. I like things to be symmetrical. Maybe it's my type A personality, but I don't like hanging cannibals off the side of my floats and, and uh, 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 pressing split shot onto my leader. To me, that's a break point potential because you're crimping that monofilament and it's just never really a good idea, especially if you get into a much bigger fish than you anticipated. So there's some things we can do as far as rigging that's going to set you guys straight on how we do it. A uh, Couple things, we'll look at the table here. And I got a number of different weights and we're talking about that midpoint weight, something that I'm going to put on my leader uh, back up here. So uh, by the rules, you can have a weight within 12 inches of your hook. OK, um, if I'm running a 24 to 30 inch leader, typically I don't go any longer than 24 inches thereabouts, 20, 24 inches. I like to have that midpoint weight and I'll always put it in there right about 12 inches above my hook. There's different ways I can do that. I can uh, put some type of stopper on my leader. I can use an egg sinker. I can use a bullet sinker. I can actually tie one of these little eighth ounce inline sinkers with uh, barrel swivels at each end, but then I'm having to tie additional knots. And anytime you put a knot in your system, it's a break point or a failure point, potentially, depending on how strong your knot is. So there's a couple things we can do that makes baiting or waiting your leader in eggs to get them down the water column that just works a heck of a lot better and I've had great success with it. But let's back up before we do that. Let's talk a little bit about floats. We have different sizes of floats. We have different uh, types of floats. These newer torpedo floats by Bomac that have been running the last couple of years work fantastic. Of course, then we have the bobber dogging style floats. We don't use the bobber dog style float in a vertical presentation. What I mean vertical is anytime I'm fishing and I want my float to be straight up and down the water column as it moves down river. Uh, this bobber, this bobber dogging float is not designed to fish vertically. This bobber is designed to point down river and have the current surface current pushing it down the river, assisting and dragging your presentation because your lead is actually on the bottom. Vertical presentations, you are always suspended in or above the fish, but never dragging your bait on the bottom because the lowest point of this presentation is your bait which is down towards the bottom and you adjust your float to keep that presentation a foot or two off the bottom as it transitions through where the fish are lying. When you're bobber dogging, your lowest point is actually your weight is dragging on the bottom and your bait is uh, neutral buoyant and will float up. And so you're dragging your weight with this and you're fishing your bait presented a couple feet off the bottom with this. So let's, let's talk about vertical first and show you guys how to rig this up. So I really like even fishing from the bank or the drift boat or whatever my presentation is, 10 and a half, 10 foot, more so for me, 10 and a half foot rods, 10 to 20 pound rating. Both these are Lama glass. I got a G1000 and I got an SI model. They both work great. Uh, for my vertical presentation, I like that SI. It's a light rod, holding it up all day. I spool that up on my bait casting reel with 50 pound braid. Um, you guys have heard me say it before, 50 pound, because if you do get hung up and you bury that line into your spool, that 50 pound is not gonna cut down into the spool so deep that it's hard to get out of there. If I'm running like a 30 pound, 
which you can do. Uh, you'll have some issues with it getting balled up inside your spool. Castability with that large diameter line is that much better. Plus, it gives you a little more float buoyancy on the surface when the line lays out there going to your float. So I recommend at least a 40. I typically go with 50 pound braid. To that I secure a, about a 12 to 18 foot top shot. That's just three pulls off of my line spool uh, wingspan. And so I'm in around 18 foot of at least 25 pound. Typically use uh, Ultra Green, Maxima, very strong, durable line. You can bump that to 30 pound if you're into really big fish, typically, and or fishing around a lot of structure. You don't want to go too light on your top shot because that is a breaking point. So my float is going to function on my monofilament, on my top shot, okay? Makes sense. Most of this monofilament is down below the float. Monofilament sinks, okay? So that line, I want it to be monofilament under the float and from the float up for the most part, except for maybe a five or six foot length, depending on how deep I'm fishing, will be floating on the water with the braid. I've put a uh, Bomax stopper on here, one of those rubber egg stoppers because they grab so efficiently on your monofilament. Okay, so we put the uh, Bomax stoppers on here and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Um, now, the first thing I'm gonna put on after that stop is a cheater or a corky or something that is contrast and color to the top of my float. The reason I do that is because when I cast out and I can see that the line has fed through the float and I think I'm fishing completely maxed out to the depth I've set my stopper at, sometimes things get hung up, a, a bobber or float can get grooved, your line can hang up in there, and you'll notice that you're not fully extended to your depth that you set because your corky or cheater will be up the line and it'll be away from the float, okay? It'll be sitting up there a foot or two away it indicates to you that you haven't maxed out your depth. Something's not working with your system. If everything's working correctly, this against the stopper and all the weight sliding through the float, when this is fishing vertical, everything sits right on top. So we start off by putting the stopper on and then I go ahead and put on my cheater. <clears throat> I like that one simply because the way it rides on the float and the color contrast. Then I'm gonna slide on the float, okay? Now I have to put a protection bead, because as I tie my inline sinker, I put a protection bead uh, above the knot, so when everything shoves down on top of it, it's uh, not beaten against the knot, so we're gonna put a six mil bead, goes on next, up the line. And then as far as these Bomax stoppers, you know, I use a few of them in this, in this rigging. I put one for my bobber stop, I put one at the bottom end, right next to my knot, because if I do get hung up and I have a fail point, and it happens to be the knot that goes to my main line, that knot can break away, but if I have a stopper right above that knot, I don't lose my float and everything else along with it. I lose the weight, and I lose the hooks, and that's it, okay? So I always recommend putting an additional stopper, and these are really great. You just simply slide that on through the eye of that wire, okay? And you're just gonna pull that little rubber grommet uh, if I can see this, pull that rubber grommet right off of there and onto your line. So there it is against there, pull that off. Now I'm using 25 pounds, so it's kind of thick to get it on there. But once that's on, I can slide that up out of the way now of where I'm gonna tie my knot as soon as I get my pliers. Okay, we'll grab this. That thing is really tight, which is good because they don't move on your bobber stop once it's up your line. So I use those 12 pound size diameter they're a little tough to get on there, but it's going on 25 pound mono. So once it's in place, man, it stays. You don't have to deal with it. So that stopper's on there. This is a one ounce float. I'm gonna rig it with a three quarter weight or a three quarter ounce float. I'm gonna put with a five, five eighths ounce weight. I always have about a quarter ounce variable because I'm gonna add eggs. So we're gonna tie this weight on here. Okay, so just a real quick cinch knot on here. And if, uh, get that through there. Okay, so I'm just gonna go four wraps. Okay, there's one, two, three. Now I put these inline, you, you know, Bomag makes them, a handful of other companies make them, but you go with these inline weights because they're double barrel swiveled at, at each end or they have a barrel swivel at each end and um, they go perfectly in line and hang vertical right underneath your weight. Cut off your extra and that's where that is. So now, make sure you don't forget to slide that stopper down right on your knot so that your float and everything will come down to there. Now, if I was fishing this with a 20, 24 inch leader 
and it's a, it's a shallow fishery, that float's gonna slide up that line until it hits that stopper. And that's where it's at. So the weight's down there, and now we'll put the leader on to show you the full depth. Now, some of your fisheries, and you have to read your regulations. Some of them you can use a dual hook setup, like on this bobber dogging rig, I have a mooching rig, albeit it's tied very close together because I'm using a uh, three-out hook and a size one stinger. I like to have a hook exposed when I'm using bait, a glob of eggs on there, okay? So I'm gonna put the eggs in the bait loop on the three-aught, and I'm gonna have that number one stinger hanging underneath the bait, which is gonna allow for more uh, solid hookups, higher hookup to land ratio by having a second hook. Now, some of our fisheries, it's very specific, based on non-buoyant lure and anti-snagging rules. When you read in through that, and I've had this discussion with numerous uh, enforcement officers and how the interpretation is, you can only fish one hook. That being said, I will oftentimes take and tie a dual hook. Now this is a three or four aught as the main hook. The top hook, I, f I actually then slide on and tie because I wanna use that bait loop, okay? So then at the, on the shank of the hook, you basically cut the bend and the point of the hook off. So you're truly only fishing one hook and I'm using that for nothing more than a bait loop. So my eggs would go in here, sense that against the eggs, and I have that nice big hook hanging down there completely exposed. Hook up to land ratio goes through the roof because it's not obstructed by the bait. Even the smallest, quickest little takedown or bite, that hook's getting into somewhere. If you haven't done that, if you're held down by only being able to use one hook and you want more hook exposure, simply tie that second hook on, cut the shank, give you that little uh, 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 egg loop on that shank, and you're going to find out how well that works. So, talking about the weight, the third bobber stop I put is actually at that midpoint. And what I do is I take about an inch of this uh, one eighth inch size hollow core lead. Okay, you cut off about an inch, it's gonna weigh about an eighth of an uh, ounce, and we're gonna slide that down. Now for me, that just sits there. I could put an egg sinker, I can put uh, one of those colored sinkers, I can put any of those egg or you know hollowed out sinkers on there. But this low profile for me, as far as that, um, that nice straight little piece of lead, gets it done. I find that it doesn't hang up. Once in a while you extend your bobber stop too far and your presentation's dragging on the bottom. And these little egg sinkers and these bullet sinkers and other types of weights, they tend to get hung up. This nice thin little piece of lead just kind of snakes on through stuff, really doesn't grab a whole lot, okay? So that's a really easy one to do. You cut off about a one inch piece of that hollow core, one eighth um, uh, lead, one eighth inch lead, and you just slide that over your bobber stop. It rides there all day long. No, it doesn't put any pressure on your leader. It doesn't crimp it doesn't cause any damage to your leader. We've caught a bunch of Chinook and Coho on this rig over the last several years. It works fantastic. So then we're just gonna tie that on to our inline weight as uh, we did the top knot. And for time's sake, I'm not gonna put you through that pain, but basically 20, 24 inch leader, adjustable stopper knot at the top. Okay, so I can run that up to six feet. I can run it up to 12 feet. I can run it to whatever depth I need it to be at. And everything is going to slide straight up and down. The, the presentation is going to be hanging straight up. Now, when I'm fishing water of depth, and I don't know how deep it is, and I throw it out there and I get a nice even drift that goes through and I don't get a takedown, I'm going to pull it back in. I'm going to slide this knot a couple more feet up the line. I'm going to reel it in, cast it out. Everything's going to sink down until it hits the stop. I'm going to go through the drift. If I don't get bit, I'm going to repeat that and go a little deeper. Now, the next cast, as I find, as it starts getting into the meat of the hole, the float is pointing down river, okay? And as it's pointing down river, that indicates to me that I've exceeded the depth of the hole, and my weight and my bait and everything that is dragging is dragging on the bottom. Easy fix, reel it back in, take your, uh, take your stopper, slide it back down about two feet, because now you have found the depth of the hole. And now, the next time you cast out that float, is going to suspend that presentation within a foot or two of the bottom, right where those Chinook like to lie, okay? Easy rig, nice and straight, pretty uh, low profile. It casts really nice because everything's in line. 
It feeds out the line really nice. Uh, make sure you're using grommeted floats like these from Bomac. They work great. They last forever. Um, it's a great presentation. The bobber dogging setup also works for Chinook and Coho with bait. Don't be afraid to use that. We can break that down more next time, but the bobber dogging will work. Remember, you have a different style of float for bobber dogging and you're dragging your lead purposefully on the bottom. Whereas when we're fishing suspended, all the presentation of the bait is uh, up off the bottom. Okay, that's gonna do it for us here in the bait lab. Get out there and get some Chinook. Send us some pictures on our Facebook page. Post them up. Uh, give us an indication how your season is going. If you got questions, comments, or concerns, or think I'm full of it, let us know. And I will forward that information to my buddy Tom. Mm -hmm.